Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. Closed borders in Trinidad and Tobago are pressuring Caribbean airlines to take measures to survive. This story takes a lead in our 954th edition of Caribbean Perspective for Thursday, 1st October 2020. Details after this important message. The hurricane season is now upon us, so we as Caribbean people need to remember to think safety and be prepared. during a storm or hurricane, especially if there are strong winds. Rooftops and other debris are often blown about and can cause great damage. Welcome back. Trinidad and Tobago's state-owned carrier, Caribbean Airlines, has announced cost-cutting measures that will include the temporary trimming of staff by 33% and the reduction of salaries as the airline struggles with profitability due to closed borders. Details in the CNC3 news item. Caribbean Airlines is set to send home one-third of its staff for the next three months as the airline struggles to cope with the financial fallout of the COVID-19 pandemic. In a release issue today, Cal said it also would cut the salaries of those who are paid more than $7,500 a month for eight months, starting in the middle of next month. The higher the salary, the bigger the cuts, and the layoffs will be decided on the role and current needs of the business. The airline says it will also reduce contractors and temporary workers, as well as allowances that are not relevant at this time. Cal said standard industrial relations criteria were used to select the employees who will be temporarily laid off. The airline assured stakeholders that its current operations would not be impacted by the layoffs. Although the country's borders remain closed, the airline is still operational for domestic flights between Trinidad and Tobago, cargo operations, the Kingston and Barbados-based commercial service, and special repatriation flights from around the world. Four days after he applied for his first vacation leave since becoming Commissioner of Police, Gary Griffith was given the green light to proceed for a month where he plans to spend some time in Ireland with his son, Gary Griffith III. Police Commissioner Gary Griffith will proceed on one-month vacation beginning Friday to support his son, who is playing professional football in Ireland. Griffith applied to the Minister of National Security for 21 working days to travel to the European country to be with his son. A rumor began circulating on social media today that the Police Service Commission met this morning and a decision was taken to send a Griffith on administrative leave with immediate effect. But while police sources within the police service confirmed that that was false, head of corporate communications for the TTPS, Francis Joseph, confirmed that acting deputy commissioner of police, McDonald Jacob, will act as police commissioner from Friday. Mr. Jacob currently is on leave and returns to work on Friday. A release from the Police Service Commission confirmed that the Commissioner will be proceeding on vacation and Mr. Jacobs' temporary appointment. Trinidad's opposition leader Kamla Passat Bissessar has called on the government to stage a virtual carnival next year. Speaking at the UNC virtual meeting, Passat Bissessar said she agreed with the position of the Prime Minister given the way the pandemic was ravaging the world. But at the same breath, she called the move short-sighted and visionless. She said we are now living in a virtual world and with a virtual carnival, there could still be an avenue for stakeholders to benefit. More in the CNC3 news item. Well, in light of the announcement that Carnival 2021 is not on, opposition leader Kamal Passad Bissessa is calling on the government to move the greatest show on earth to a virtual platform. Speaking at a UNC virtual meeting just hours after the Prime Minister's announcement, Mrs. Passad Bissessa said she agrees with the position of the Prime Minister but she said there could still be an avenue for stakeholders to benefit. So all the people who participate in Carnival, all the artists, all the really very talented, creative people can have a chance. And we could have our Carnival across the world, virtual. It can become a forex earner. And those who are involved in this massive event each year, apart from the actual revelers on the streets, you can have virtual events, Prime Minister. 
Meanwhile, NCC Chairman Winston Gypsy Peter says whatever is the fate of Carnival, it must result in financial gains for the country. Speaking on CNC3's The Morning Brew today, Peter said long before the Prime Minister's announcement, the NCC and the stakeholders were discussing a plan. He said all scenarios were examined. That Carnival is not just for us to show off on ourselves. Carnival is something that is, is a money earner and a foreign exchange earner for Trinidad and Tobago. Carnival is business. Carnival is not just about jump and wine. Well, the NCC chairman said if the proposed virtual shows are to advertise our carnival, then he is in agreement. If it is just something that we're going to do to say that we're doing something and we're just putting on a virtual carnival, because I've looked at some of those virtual carnivals that they put on and I really wonder what those things are all about. The fact remains is that I believe that if we put on a virtual carnival, I know it's going to be better than those. But at the same time, we have to understand why we're doing it, what, what we want to achieve by doing it. And as long as we can come up and those answers can be clear in our minds, definitely we are going to do it. But we Peter's also made it clear, and you want to pay attention to this one, that the calendar day set aside for Carnival Monday and Tuesday next year would be regular working days. So take note. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. Over now to St. Lucia, where Castries South MP Dr. Ernest Hilaire says the acting controller of customs can seize his Land Rover if he believes that he has the basis so to do. However, Dr. Hilaire said that the public official has been forewarned that there will be serious legal consequences. Talk show host Claudius Francis has revealed that well-placed sources have informed him that the acting controller of customs, Peter Chico, has prepared a warrant to impound Cashy South MP Dr. Ernest Hilaire's Land Rover. He made the revelation during the primetime edition of Straight Up Monday night. The Alan Chastney administration has accused the ex-St. Lucia High Commissioner to London of fraud, regarding the ownership and importation of the vehicle. Hilaire vehemently denies any wrongdoing. A war of words has ensued with a flurry of letters between the Customs and Excise Department and attorneys for the lawmaker over the SUV. Subject to my executive producer producer's uh, approval, I'm hoping to have Ernest Hilaire on the show, perhaps on Friday, because today, Acting Controller of Customs, Peter Chico, signed the warrant for the seizure of Ernest's vehicle. And I'll tell you what, Chico, my good friend, you know, but I'll tell you what he now thinks of me on Friday when I have Ernest on. Reporters approached Dr. Hilaire for comment outside Parliament on Tuesday. The Castries South MP says he is ready to surrender the vehicle to the acting controller of customs, Peter Chico, but the controller could face litigation. If you want it and you believe you have a basis for taking it, please come and take it. I've always said so. When you do come and take it, face the consequences of taking it. Because if I know it is mine, just like I assume you believe the shit on you is yours, exactly, and if you believe you can come and take it, Please come and take it. And I keep saying that to them. If you believe you have a basis for taking something, I know that's mine. Come and take it. Will you resist? No, I will not resist. So Absolutely not. I have cleaned it and washed it, and I will hand it over to them. The only thing, though, if you come in and collect it and you have a warrant, I have a right to see the warrant. I have a right to ask my lawyers, is this a legitimate document? And I will give it to them. But the day after, they will face legal action. They will. According to the law, returning diplomats are entitled to concessions on the shipping and clearing of goods, the cost of which is borne by the Ministry of External Affairs. However, it was revealed that the department, which had agreed to settle outstanding VAT on the Land Rover, was ordered by the Finance Ministry to halt these payments. Dr. Hilaire says the vehicle issue is no longer about him, but rather perceived abuse of office. There is the political directorate that is given instructions to law enforcement agencies. The acting controller himself in a report said the Prime Minister called a meeting to express his concern about the lack of action in regards to my vehicle and for action to be taken. Now, there's absolutely no way the political directorate should be given instructions to law enforcement agencies. 
I mean, when you hear those things happen in Africa, we say there is dictatorship. There are military dictatorships, there are police states, whatnot. The political directorate has no business giving instructions to law enforcement. And this is what's happening in this country. A permanent secretary, acting permanent secretary, is transferred because she agreed to act to pay outstanding VAT on the vehicle that the ministry has to pay. An acting country of customs, too, transferred because they refused to act on the instructions given. I mean, this is what's happening in this country. Chico had written to Dr. Hilaire requesting that the Land Rover be returned to Port Castries by September 16, 2020, pending a supplier's invoice. Previous customs controllers have been transferred, fueling allegations by the opposition of a political witch hunt. Clear in my mind, without any doubt, that Chico was appointed to serve the purposes of going and collect my vehicle. It was a political role he had to perform. I'm also convinced that he gave an undertaking to do so and that he was appointed to do so. There is no rationale in what Chico is doing. I mean, there is the last letter I got from Chico. He is saying to me, he has a copy of the supplier's invoice which the Ministry of Foreign Affairs got from Land Rover. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs is the one making the entry on my behalf. He has it. But he asked me, Can, give me your own copy or else I will take the vehicle. Now, I mean, when, when you read stuff like that, you wonder what's the rationality in what he's doing. There is none in my view. So let him do what he wants. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm anxious to give him the vehicle because the day after, we will file our, our charges. Attorneys for the Castry South MP have cautioned the acting controller of customs. They warn that the MP will not hesitate to file suit against him personally for his actions in public office in the Vigo saga. Colby DeVoe. HDS News Force. It appears that the St. Lucia's Deputy Commissioner of Police, Milton Desir, has put his retirement plans on hold. The career cop has confirmed that he has signed up for an additional two years in the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. It will be another two years of service in the Royal St. Lucia Police Force for Deputy Commissioner of Police, Milton Desi. Official confirmation came from the senior top cop himself outside Parliament on Tuesday. Have the details of your return been confirmed in terms of how long you're expected to serve as deputy? Yeah, well, my return, have, um, I've gotten a letter indicating that cabinet had approved my um, staying in the force for an, an additional two years. Yes, and I'll be um, as deputy. Daisy, who deputized for the vacationing commissioner of police, Severin Morcheri, was scheduled to retire with the start of his pre-retirement vacation leave in early September. However, in a stunning turn of events, Daisy was recalled to the post of deputy commissioner, stating that his tenure would now end in December 2020. But now it appears the correct cop will be in the police high command for an extended period. Observers have raised questions about the line of succession within the ranks of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force and respect for the substantive holder of the office of commissioner, who is due to retire in 2021. But what about the other officers who may be looking to move up in the force? Aren't you concerned about them? Well, persons looking to move up, as um, in any organization, you would have persons that are motivated, those that are not motivated to work. You would have persons with skills, persons without skills. You would have persons with the, the training, but they are not performing. What you need is performance. And somebody may feel that they deserve to be up there, but what about their performance? There is no doubt that the current regime holds Daisy in high esteem. He has received glowing commendation from the Minister for Home Affairs. In a recent interview, Senator Herman Gil Francis stated that Moshari may have to step up his game after resuming command of the RSLPF. Solaj Alfred, HTS News Force. <music> I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.